Good morning and welcome to Tenderfoot Farms. It's September the 23rd, day after the fall equinox, and today I'm going to show you how to install a yard hydrant, also known as a freeze proof faucet. That's particularly problematic here in far north Alabama, not because our winters are that cold, but because our ground is acidic, our water table is very high in the wintertime. And all that leads up to preventing your faucet from working correctly. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Two years ago I put in this pipe down in the bottom. You can see I've got a nice little box in the ground. But I didn't put a hydrant in. So today I dug a big hole next to it. It's a little over two feet deep. That gravel is going to come out. I'm not quite ready for that yet. And uh, I dug up the other pipes that were already in the ground. I had a valve down in the ground so that I could just hook up water lines there. And I'll show you what happened to those pipes. Actually, I guess it was three years ago I put those in the ground. This is one of the pipes I dug up. And you can see that it's kind of a black color with lots of rust on it. And if you look inside, see that big lump there? I can't actually get that out. That's corrosion that's building up quite thick and already plugging the pipe in just three years time. And this pipe was galvanized when I installed it. So in just three years, all the galvanization has come off. And uh, that's pretty typical for around here. I've dug up other pipes and the galvanization comes off very quickly. So I'm going to show you how I fix that. and. Uh, let you see how this goes. This is the hydrant that I bought to put in here. I don't know if you can tell compared to my fence, but it's about five feet tall from the ground. That's a four foot fence. And you can see that it's a one inch galvanized pipe, very heavy gauge steel. Unfortunately, you have to buy them with galvanized pipe, uh, not something that wouldn't rust. And then way down here at the bottom, you can see where it kind of gets a little bit bigger. That's actually where the valve is. And then this little hole off to the side is where water drains out when you close the valve and stop water flow. And that is what stops it from freezing because all the water in this pipe can drain out. So there's no water in the pipe when water's not running through it. Now to help that galvanized pipe last longer, you can see it's painted red. What you don't see about the red paint is that underneath it, I sprayed it pretty good with a couple of coats of this bright galvanizing compound, which is a zinc rich paint. And it works really well to help your galvanization last longer. And then I put a waterproof paint over the outside of that. I don't know exactly how much that'll help, but it'll be some. This uh, particular hydrant is for my goats. You can see there's their, their house and they've got about a two acre pasture here. It's working great. I need some more goats actually because they don't even come close to keeping up with eating all the grass. So you saw the pipe that I already had in the ground. Here's how I'm going to hook things up to it. This is going to screw into the existing pipe. There'll be a little short stubby piece of one inch PVC to this. This hooks to a union. That union makes your life a lot easier. There's a little rubber O-ring in there and it screws into this. This is the pressure regulator. The uh, county water pressure here is about 75 to 80 PSI at the street. And most of your appliances and faucets and things like that can't handle water pressure that high. So the pressure regulator can drop it down to whatever pressure you want. I've got it set to about 40 PSI and uh, they come preset so you don't have to change those if you don't want to but they do have an adjustment screw at the top and they come with instructions on how to do that and then that's going to screw into this because it comes with inside threads here. I have a little stubby piece of one inch pipe again and then a T with a threaded fitting that goes on the inside and I'm going to screw this quarter turn valve into it so that I have a valve down in the ground uh, where I can connect a hose if I want to. 
and the quarter turn valves are great they're all brass except for this little nut here at the top and this one's been in the ground three years already and you can tell it's rusting a bit I could replace this with stainless steel uh, but unfortunately they also sell the handles for these are also uh, just a chrome plated steel and they rust too and eventually I'll have to replace the handle but the rest of that valve is either brass or down inside there's a stainless steel ball and some nylon uh, washers but they last pretty well and they're real easy to use down inside of a box so from the pressure regulator to the valve inside my box then this piece of pipe right here will be a little bit longer and it'll go into that new hole that I've dug then there'll be a T with a stubby piece of pipe this piece right here will thread into the bottom of the hydrant that you just saw and then the hydrant will stick up above the ground from there and then I'm going to keep going past that with another stubby little piece of pipe and a T that'll actually run this way down in the ground I'll show it to you when we get there and it'll have a little piece of pipe coming out of each side with a cap on each end and that's just to provide some stability to help the hydrant not rock uh, particularly before I get this all finished when I'm done there will be a concrete pad that helps hold this all in place so that's kind of the order that pipe fittings and stuff are going to go down in the box I've just got to measure everything so that this and this and this all fit down inside of my box and that box isn't really very big so I'll have to keep those pipe pieces as short as possible down in the bottom and there's that original piece another important point is you can see the valve that's right there anytime I put any plumbing fittings outside hydrants branches to hydrants whatever I always add a valve because that way I can shut water off independently and uh, not have to turn off water to the house so right now my water to this is turned off but the house is still on and that way my wife and kids don't fuss at me about how quickly I have to get the project finished you can see down in here that I've got bricks on top of bricks on top of bricks the spray foam there is really just to keep the dirt from falling in back when I first installed this box and then here's this box and that's because I wanted this hole pretty deep wanted to make sure that stuff wouldn't freeze down in the bottom and they just don't sell these plastic boxes deep enough to do what I want now here in North Alabama we're in zone 7a and our freeze our freeze depth is only between 6 and 12 inches which is not very deep but I always assumed that things were gonna get colder you can do a little research on the grand solar minimum and channels like adapt 2030 and ice age farmer and you'll understand why but i i figure what weather's getting colder over the next couple of years and i just don't like to have problems so i always put things in deeper than they tell me i have to now i said earlier that i had this hole about just over two feet deep and that's deep enough in terms of freezing and all that kind of stuff what you can't tell on my video very well is that hard ground just does not drain water very good especially in the winter time the first foot's okay but after that we very quickly into a heavy silt and some clay mixture and the water just sits there and all winter long especially the water table will be really high because we get lots of rain in the winter time and because that water table is so high it can make my hydrant not drain very well so one thing i'm going to do is right in the center of this I'm going to dig a hole even deeper just with a post hole digger just to increase the surface area of where water can drain and uh, it'll be filled up with gravel but I'm going to do that now one of my favorite digging tools it's called a digging bar it's just uh, I guess maybe an inch and an eighth bar of steel it's six feet long it's pointy up on the top and then down on the bottom this particular one has a little two inch wide two inch wide digging piece but it's just sheer weight mostly and you just pick it up and let gravity do the work all you got to do is pick up the bar and it breaks up hard ground down in there really well it'll even break through rocks if you need it to of 
course you'd use the uh, pointy end for breaking rocks but works awesome and so now I got to get to work all right after about five minutes of digging got my hole cleaned up I added a nine or ten inch hole in the bottom which I will just fill with gravel give it a little extra place for water to drain and access to some more layers of soil hopefully help it drain better of course when the water tables up really high which in the winter time it'll be to the top six inches of the ground uh, having all this stuff down here won't make a bit of difference because the ground is saturated everywhere and then that's the view into my other pipe where we're going to be hooking on but during most of the year this will help let that hydrant have a place to drain and hopefully not get so saturated you can see this ledge that I've got between my big hole up to where these pipes are up here and that's to help water drain away from all these valves so that uh, hopefully my valves don't stay underwater too much the deep rumbly sound you just heard was my son coming to help in his truck he lives just up the road so I'm gonna put some gravel down here in the bottom get that filled up Now we'll move on to the pipes. So when you're cutting little pieces of pipe for your PVC, hopefully you can see that. There's a, see little burrs that get on the inside of that. Make sure you clean those off. You can do it with your hands. You can do it with a rag. You can do it with sandpaper, I guess. Never needed to, but if you don't get those out of the inside of the pipe, they'll plug up screens and filters. For example, there's screens inside your pressure regulator. There's screens inside of faucets, hydrants, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you get those little burrs out of the inside of your pipe before you hook it together. And uh, they can be pretty bad. Here's what it looks like when you first cut it and haven't done anything to clean it up. And uh, you can see that I'm cutting these just long enough to be able to stick into each side of the each fitting so that I have as short a piece of pipe as I can. Then we'll hook these together this is not a video about how to do PVC, but we're gonna use purple primer, which is awesome but messy. And uh, then we'll use all-purpose cement. That purple primer cleans up your plastic, gets the dirt off of it, and softens it to help prepare it for glue, and it just makes things work a whole lot better. All right, time to put on some of my threaded parts. You can see I got that glued together, and I've got this one over here glued together. But I'm going to use yellow number five, best pipe joint compound ever. Does gas, water, other gases, it's great. When you put yellow number five on there, you want to make sure the stuff coming out looks like thin Play-Doh, not like just liquid. That liquid stuff is like when a mustard jar pees on you when you didn't shake it up correctly. So you got to put it on there. Looks like clay goes down in the threads. We'll wipe it off here and get it just down in the threads because this is way too much right now. There you go. I got the threads wiped off and it's all ready to screw together. By the way, if you ever see one of these, hopefully I can get him to hold still long enough to focus on it. That is a velvet ant, also known as a mule killer. And you really don't want to get stung. They're pretty big, maybe three quarters of an inch long and fuzzy. Here we caught it in the ball so you can get a better look. They, uh, they're actually a kind of wasp. It's a wingless wasp. Even though it looks like an ant, it is not. And uh, I guess they're all over the southeastern United States, but that'll hurt worse than any wasp sting you've ever had. That's bad. Anyway, enough of a fun break. One trick to doing this is you want to make sure you thread things into your PVC before you glue your PVC together. That way you can choose exactly what orientation 
stuff ends up in instead of relying on exactly where it is when the threads go tight. So here I've got my quarter turn valve and it's all screwed in with yellow number five. And uh, I wanna put this down in here, but I wanna make sure that it goes down in where this handle sticks out perpendicular to all of this so that when people turn the valve off and on, like this, that it's torquing on the pipe this direction because I do not want torque on the pipe this way which will make it more likely to unthread something. And that's why I said it was very important to uh, thread your pieces into your PVC before you glue them so that you can choose exactly what orientation it glues into. So we've been working on this for a little while. Got some pieces. This little T is what I told you about that just provides some cross stability to help the uh, hydrant not want to wobble. If you look under here, this is where things have been all hooked together. You see this right here? We've got our quarter turn valve down in the ground so I can hook a faucet in the ground if I want to. Pressure regulator. And this piece right here is a union that means you can screw and unscrew this part over here without twisting any of your pipes, without having to fight them so much. It's a very important piece. Now we're gonna start working on the part that gives us better insulation on the pipe up above ground. So to make this a lot more insulated against the cold, I've bought these big four inch pipe fittings. You can see I, we kind of burned a little notch out of it. That notch was just so that it would fit over the top of this right here and uh, it's going to go on the pipe like this one this will be up here at the top we'll have a four inch pvc pipe all the way down in the middle and we'll fill up the gap between this pipe and the four inch pvc pipe with spray foam so that it's well insulated it's important to know that insulation does not make things warm it only slows down the movement of heat or cold. And so by having the part down in the ground that's gonna be in contact with ground temperature and then insulation up here at the top, that will help the cold that's touching the metal out here from the air not spread down there to where the valve is. Because this thick part right here is the valve that actually turns water off and on. So this is what's gotta stay frost free and the rest of this, you don't want it to freeze inside this pipe because otherwise it'll slowly build up ice inside the pipe. So my son is off cutting our PVC pipe, it's the big fat four inch one, so that uh, it'll fit down the middle. And then these cap fittings will keep the galvanized pipe centered in the middle of our four inch PVC pipe so that we can fill it with spray foam equally. The spray foam is just insulation to uh, help slow things down, but slow down, slow down the transfer of cold. And then uh, this bottom part of the pipe here, we want that exposed to ground temperature so that it can stay warm. Because the only source of warmth we're gonna have in the winter time is the temperature of the earth itself. Nothing else is gonna actually provide warmth to this. All right, everything is hooked up. We've waited a good hour, dried everything off. We leak tested it. Made sure that nothing leaks. We're holding this piece of four inch PVC up like this so that we can get the gravel in there in the right spot. We have not put our spray foam in there yet, but that's coming here shortly. But you can kind of see how that four inch piece is gonna go down. We'll pour a concrete slab up here on the surface that'll hold this still. Plus being in gravel and dirt will also hold it still. You can see down here that I've got some good duct tape around the bottom and that is to stop spray foam from coming out of the bottom of this. We're going to put spray foam in through these holes that we've drilled right here. It's about every eight or ten inches and let it fill up the inside of that pipe and then we'll have 
this will be duct taped up here although if it comes out at the top it's no big deal i can trim it off later and then this big piece of duct tape is just to stop the pipe from falling down while the uh, spray foam sets up and while we get gravel poured in the hole all right so that we can put gravel and dirt in here and not fill up our box where the valves and stuff are i got some good coroplast political sign and we're gonna put that down a little groove cut over that put it down like that and that way we can fill things up and not fill in our hole where this the valve box is we didn't have quite enough gravel still got one more bag but uh, we're putting some big rocks in there to help take up room it's important this drain hole right here be inside the gravel because that's where water drains out when you close the valve got gravel good and covering up the drain hole now we're gonna put some plastic over the top of the gravel it does not need to be watertight it'll just stop the dirt from filtering down into the gravel over time so we just finished packing dirt around it we're gonna go get a tamping rod and tamp it down better we got some of the spray foam in. You can see it oozing out. It'll ooze for a couple of hours as it expands. And uh, down here in the hole, our political sign did a great job of keeping dirt out of our of where our valves are. And then this is the top that I made quite some time ago. This is spray foam. And then I painted it just to help protect it from ultraviolet in case someone uh, leaves it outside the hole. But it works great to put it in there and I, I had a hole cut in it so that i could have a hose come out of it in the middle of the winter which works just fine the air down in the hole stays quite warm works really well uh, if it gets real cold i can pack a rag in it or something like that but eventually if i don't use that valve i may replace the lid but for now it's good and then we're going to pour a concrete pad around this to help hold it still but that'll be next this is a tamping bar, six feet long, inch thick steel with a big wide flat circle at the bottom. You just drop it, let gravity do the work. So you can pack that dirt down real solid before we put our concrete on top of it. It's important to let gravity do the work before you get tired in a hurry. Now I'm going to add some more dirt and pound some more. Alright, I finished tamping. I've left this channel dug down. That'll give my concrete slab somewhere to settle down into and help it not slide around very easily. Help it, uh, of course it won't slide around much just because it's around this white post, but I always like to do this on my concrete. Sort of like a mini footer. Anyway, time to go get some more spray foam and eat some lunch these are our goats they're the reason we were putting in that hydrant so that it's easy to give them water in the winter time we got our two youngest ones they were born about nine or ten months ago and we got our billy goat his name is lucifer and he smells terrible don't let anyone tell you otherwise billy goats stink Buddy's a good goat. And then down here, we have Annie. Annie is our nanny goat. And she's pregnant right now. She's supposed to have babies, or one or more babies, in about November. It's the end of September right now. So these are our goats, and having that hydrant will make it a whole lot easier to uh, give them water in the wintertime. Here's our concrete form. Got it all the right thickness. I've got an edge dug down here. Help it not slide around. And also just help the corner of my, or the edge of my concrete not get uncovered. And uh, get those corners nice and clean. And we'll get this mixed up and get a little concrete pad. It's important that this gap back here be at least three inches. Otherwise your concrete will crack.
So here our concrete's poured. We put Zoe's dog footprints in it. And you can see that the concrete is mounded up quite a bit. It's kind of a dome shape. I like doing that for outdoor concrete pads because then they don't puddle. And uh, after the concrete's cured, we'll take these two by fours off and clean off the edges. Still need to add some more spray foam because we don't have any from about here up into the pipe, but we'll just do it through these little holes that we've already pre-drilled. And then after that's cured, we'll trim it out of the top right here and then fill this up with some good elastomeric sealant. And that's it. That is how to put in a hydrant. Some of you may be wondering about my hole. Why would I want a hole when I have a hydrant? But in the wintertime, you cannot leave this hose attached with water in it. Otherwise, you'll keep water in this pipe and it'll freeze and break the pipe. Uh, so if you keep a hose, if you have a reason to keep a hose attached, you do it down in the ground to the valve that's down in there. And, uh, you know, down there and it won't freeze and if your pipe if your hose freezes that's okay because hoses are flexible and they won't break but freezing water can put out about 3,000 pounds per square inch and it'll break just about anything no matter how tough your steel pipe thinks it is so that is the end of that how to put in a freeze proof hydrant just to recap we did some extra special things because our water table is very high in the winter and our freeze line, our frost line, is only about 6 to 12 inches down. I put the valve on this pipe 18 inches down, but I put a lot of extra deep gravel under it to give it a place to drain. Uh, hopefully it will be able to drain throughout the winter, even when our water table is very high. Otherwise, water will stay in this pipe and it will freeze anyway. So that's it, a well-insulated, frost-proof hydrant. That's all for Tenderfoot Farms. We'll talk to you later.